So how's everything on your side? Yeah, yeah, it goes me. You busy as ever. How about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. I had a, a business trip uh, for the last two days, uh, so I was on the road a little bit. Uh, spend some time with other colleagues, uh, district, so it was fun, yeah. And uh, now I'm actually looking forward to the weekend, slowly. Yeah, 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 nice. But, uh, where, but where are you traveling? Uh, to Munich, Germany. Oh, nice. I love Munich. It's a, it's a beautiful city. Unfortunately, the weather was like real, uh, we had real London weather, you know, the, the, the rain <laughs> and it was cold, so... We weren't able to enjoy so much, uh, but but it was nice in the end, you know, because it's, it's always nice, you know, this post-COVID uh, era when we are finally able to, you know, socialize a little bit, you know, meet with other colleagues and peers. Uh, I really enjoy this. Yeah, yeah. yeah do you absolutely. do you actually do you actually do much uh, live events at the moment, or you're more more also online? Um, not uh, well. Uh, I, I'm going to go to Las Vegas in a few weeks' time. Um, but it's business or pleasure? Or uh, both? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Folks. Um, the Usually the, the sales events um, are sort of around summertime um, and the second half of the year. So, yeah, they'll start picking up soon. Um, but it's, it's the same. I, I started consulting during COVID. Um, oh, and okay no site visits it was all remote and um yeah getting getting back sort of traveling again with it was really nice it's nice to like you know but, but, actually but when you say see. consulting um are you more focused on sales side or on uh, technical or a little bit of both technical um more technical. started off yeah so i started off uh, as part of the implement well i started off on support but then from that i went to uh, the implementations team and the onboarding team um, mm -hmm. I've done I've done a few demos, but it's not really something that I, I tend to do. Um, doing sales and marketing a little bit more now. Now I'm doing the webinars. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously that there's more outreach there. But but I, yeah, the con on the consulting side, I would take new clients and configure Halo for them and talk about um, the, their requirements. So, but I would say that's most exciting part of the story. You know. It, it's it's a complete project because every customer everything is different i mean okay you know when you do it for a while you have experience you know what is possible how can some things be tweaked but i think it's um i i see it as with every project you always push your limits a little bit you know further like oh. okay you know what can we do here what would be you know the best what is optimal you know how to um you know either automate or you know help them become super efficient and so so on yeah no 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 see there's um there's always what? sorry no i'm sorry I, i'm 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 rushing i have to you know it's my i have this flow when you know something comes to my mind i want to right away share it with you but yeah. uh that doesn't quite good work it works super when we are you know live but on this video uh, uh, meetings and you know, uh, conversation doesn't work so fine. So I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, mm -hmm. please just there you can finish what you want um, to say. Uh, you know, I, I was just going to say that, uh, yeah, the, the, the project management side is always, always really interesting because you always have specific requirements. Um, you got to be a little bit creative as to how you that's go about thing. achieving them. That was the thing, the creativity. That's, 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 that's fun part. And what I wanted to actually interrupt you with is, you know, I wanted to ask you what what was the biggest, you know, implementation or a, or a, or a customer that you did. Uh, I've done I've done implementations for um, a few one hundred techs in Halo. One hundred um, techs, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the majority of the MSP market is actually smaller than that. Um, so. It's it's quite hard to come across a project of that size, uh, especially you know as Halo PSA was ramping up, we were tailoring to the smaller MSPs. Um, so it was good to it was good to get some experience under my belt of uh, you know dealing with large projects, um, l many different people uh, involved, as opposed to you know just talking to one person and setting it all up. So I was talking to different departments and configuring the platform uh, based on each of their individual requirements. So. 
yeah, mm. that, those are the biggest. I think, I think that one of them is about 115 technicians now. So yeah, that's that, that's huge. And and uh, did you mostly do IT companies, meaning you know uh, IT resellers, service providers, and MSPs, or did you do you have also some experience with uh, just I don't know standard retail companies and then other type of businesses? I I don't have experience well and um, so before i was doing uh before i was part of the psa team i, I initially started off with itsm implementations mm. um which is quite handy because it's a completely different market so yeah i worked with some some retail companies um some law firms and so on uh but the the ms uh, sorry the, the psa clients are primarily msps but I've I've dealt with a couple uh, of outliers and you know again use some creative solutions to to uh, implement Halo in a way that would suit them given the fact that Halo PSA mm. uh, is is priming target market is MSPs so uh, yeah yeah well basically for today you know I was hoping you know to to catch up a little bit with you and you know to go through some uh, topics because as you may know we are also working with uh, PSA tools for the past, I would say one and a half or two years. I'm not sure how how long. And uh, we did already, you know, several implementations. But basically, till that point, we were focused more on a security, you know, documentation and this kind of uh, um, software uh, solutions. Uh, and it came, I think, only naturally with the whole MSP topic. You know the question of PSA because we did some, we had some help desks and service desks in the past, and uh, you simply grow from these tools to to uh, PSA tools. So we 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 had several uh, implementations so far. We have you know several IT service providers already. You know using PSA, we we did the onboardings, and it, it was really uh, interesting and and exciting for us to do uh, those things, to go through these experiences, uh, especially for me, uh, as I have background in uh, computer science. Um, and uh, through all these onboardings and, and experiences, you know, some, let's say, common questions uh, came uh, on topic on, of PSA tools. And that was basically the idea for today's uh, talk, what I just wanted to, you know, uh, pick your brain a little bit, uh, hear what you have to say. Basically what we had for plan is, you know, to do a, a small intro, but I guess we, you know, took care of it. So, so we, we, in a way, you know, introduced you also, uh, and, and your background. Um, so I guess we can, you know, just go through, you know, some topics that I, or questions that I, I, I feel that are, you know, interesting and, um, as I said, as we do, as we did these, you know, implementations and, and uh, integrations, uh, one of the things that was always coming is like, um, okay, you know, we have a help desk, we don't need pay PSA or for example, you know, help desk and PSA tools, basically those are the same things. Um, I mean, I think, you know, that ma majority of our IT partners no, that's not quite the case, but let's say for this small part of, of community that maybe does not quite uh, know the difference uh, between those two, what would you, let's say in some kind of simple terms, how would you say, uh, what was the, the, the main difference between, let's say, a help desk or a PSA tool? Yeah, um, I, I, I can certainly see why people would be confused, I suppose. Um, I guess the point that everyone should keep in the back of their mind is uh, a PSA will contain a help desk tool. It will contain project management functionality um, and the rest, you know, it, it, it's a, a place for the, the entire customer journey to exist within everything from an initial prospect and, and the sales flow, the quoting piece, all the way through to, to invoicing and, you know, the revenue generation. Um, so, I'd say that the difference or, or the, the consideration is that a help desk is a subset of what a PSA function will contain. Um, it, it's not that they're 
no, it's not that the help desk in a PSA is all that different from a help desk tool in itself. Uh, it's just a help desk tool is only that. It's not necessarily going to have some of the other features um, that that a PSA tool will have. So, you know, when you're when you're thinking about managing your entire business, think a PSA. Um, if you're just thinking about managing, if you're just thinking about ticket management, then a help desk is probably the, the the option for you. I would say that sums it up really perfectly, because as you say, you know, if you want to make sure that you handle, you know, or provide a certain level, uh, or let's say if you want to standardize your services, so everything that, you know, is communication between you and your customers, then, you know, maybe a help desk and ticketing uh, solution would be fine. But if you want to optimize your whole, you know, business and your, your, your business processes to be um, more efficient as an organization in total, then PSA would be uh, a better way to go. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I imagine the life cycle is something like um, people might start off with a help desk. Um, they might then buy a CRM tool separately. They might then, um, you know, get an accounts package separately. And it's going to get to a point where you're, you're managing all of these different platforms and uh, it's becoming a full-time job in itself. And at that point, you're going to want to look at a way of centralizing all of those different desperate systems uh, into a single tool and that yeah that's really sort of when when a PSA should come to mind yeah that, that's the thing you know because that's exactly what we see you know and how we came to let's say the the the, the projects that we did you know so far because there was we had partners that had help desk you know they had some kind of CRM maybe they were you know happy with it maybe they were not but as 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 you say when they start to grow they have several different tools but the key is connecting all those tools and making the the company as efficient as possible because this is where you know most of the time um is lost uh yeah. as as we as we talked with one specific partner who is uh, let's say relatively big uh implementation they said guys you know we have a sales team we have you know projects team we have help desk team and we want to make sure that we are as efficient as we possible because most of the times, you know, let's say eight out of 10 or nine out of 10, uh, we need to include all those uh, separate teams uh, into one ticket or a project because when ticket comes in, you know, it can be just a small issue, you know, we start your, you know, PC or some kind of problem that's not, you know, growing into a project but it can be you know the fact that the uh, customer needs a hardware replacement or any kind of uh, new software or hardware and then you need to include uh, other teams as well so you would have to include your sales team because they need to create an offer but they can't create an offer uh, because they need to consult project team you know because the project team needs to say hey this is how much time we would need to implement this and we need this uh, uh, how to say equipment to do it so it has to be all, you know, uh, included and communication needs to be as efficient as possible because when you when you look at it at the end of the year, for example, it really makes a difference whether, you know, you do, I don't know, 20 projects or 15 projects. It's a big impact on uh, your uh, revenue and, and profit margins. And the less time you lose uh, communicating between your internal, you know, teams, the more efficient, of course, you are. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, like, like you say, you know, 20 minutes here, half an hour there, add up exactly. over the years. So. Exactly. And then, you know, you know, it's like maybe one of the team uh, members, you know, responds, but the other team member doesn't see it. And it's like, it's not really that, you know, we were so busy, so we didn't have to have time to proceed from this step. It's just it can happen, you know, that uh, then one day someone is sick, so the other person doesn't check and take over so it's like it's easy to lose time <laughs> that's 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 yeah, yeah. that's safe to say absolutely sure and so and um uh also i think we mentioned it you know in in, in our you know intro uh the psa tools in regards to they are mostly considered as a, as a software or solution for it companies but as we are anyway you know 
speaking that uh, there are tools to help you optimize and let's say automate uh, your whole organization it doesn't really or, or it doesn't necessarily have to be you know IT company yeah. you don't have to be IT company to use BSA tools yeah do you agree no I, I, absolutely um it's I, I suppose it's really it can really be generalized to uh, any company well, any company that provides professional services right it doesn't have to be IT managed IT services yeah exactly um you know if you need to track communications with your customers and um, you know track sales for your customers and invoice your customers then you should be considering a PSA you know it's not that yeah there is there is this kind of um this notion that it is just it's just for one particular type of company um but no it, it's a generally speaking it's a centralized platform to manage your business operations um whatever that business may be and it, and it's also you know sometimes you know people see it as a as a tool that would be mainly used for uh, bigger companies or let's say bigger organizations like you said you know companies with 100 or you know 115 techs and so on but i guess you know it's like it's not necessarily the case um, you can, of course, use it also for smaller companies. But um, I have a, a, in, an interesting question which um, came to my mind is when we're talking about the size of the company, you know, for the uh, in, in relations to PSA tools, do you see in your experience, is there some kind of, you know, uh, a perfect uh, fit from the size perspective? Like, okay, this is a company with, I don't know, 20 techs or maybe maybe it's also a, a wrong perspective when we are you know checking when we're talking about company size maybe it doesn't really have to be um from perspective of technicians or persons maybe it can also be viewed from the perspective of business uh, processes it's like what would be the best fit you know i'm sure that uh, we can maybe say okay for specific uh, companies guys you are too small you know PSA tools just brings complexity to your environment, or we can say, guys, this will help your business uh, tremendously. Uh, so, so that's a really good question. Um, I think that I don't think there's a clear cut answer for it because I've I've worked with smaller clients and larger clients, and um, the, the, I don't I wouldn't say there's a company too small to use a PSA. Um, you know, obviously there's time constraints uh, when it, if, if there's fewer of you, then you're, the chances are you're not going to have someone dedicated to the upkeep of it, um, of the PSA that is. But it a PSA tool is going to be really beneficial for your company to grow and scale properly. Uh, going back to that point that we mentioned earlier, if you have this one centralized platform that manages the whole business operations, that can be applicable whether you're uh, a one-man band or you, you're 250 agents uh, all using the system, so I don't think there's I don't think there's a a company too small to use a PSA. Um, and you know, similarly for the larger clients, it, it's crucial to maintain that uh, upkeep of business processes and make sure everything's standardized. So I don't know what what are your thoughts. Um, well, originally my thought, thoughts were that, for example, for companies that are relatively small, let's say a company with one, two people, um, I can see how this could mean unnecessary complexity for them because, you know, they're operating in pretty simple, uh, uh, way. It's like, Hey, you know, a customer needs something. They give them a call. Um, usually this person that took the call can take care of most of the things if not he will call if it's a two two person team he will call his colleague and say hey listen you know i have our customer you know they need uh, he called me they need this can you please take over he will take over you know a thing will thing thing will be resolved so when we're talking about psa tools from this perspective you know what comes to my mind okay so now this person that was able to take care of you know the request or you know this uh, process with uh, one you know minute call or whatever now has to sit down 
think through about all their processes, you know, implement the solution. Um, when something comes, he has to go, you know, into the system. Okay. Um, for example, some tools as, um, for example, Halo, you also can integrate your, you know, telephone system. So the, the opportunities and things can be generated directly from the calls that you're having. So, okay, that's, that's, that makes it simple, but initially my thought was like, okay, for this type of team, one person that has, let's say relatively simple organization or two people team without not so, with, with not so many, uh, business processes. I can see how this can add a little bit of complexity and take away from their time because now they have to set up everything and they need to spend their time on uh, this when rather they would maybe, you know, focus on their customers generating new business and so on. But, um, I can also see from a different pers perspective, how this can, you know, uh, generate more, uh, business and flexibility for them down the line, because once the system is set up and they automate everything, they, for example, implement service desks. So now their, you know, customer doesn't have to, you know, call them. They can just uh, do it via service desk, you know, uh, send a ticket, uh, system can automate, uh, billing for them, you know, so they have customers that are using Microsoft licenses or any type of other licenses. For example, we have RMM tools, uh, PSA can, you know, pull the amount of, uh, devices of licenses automatically and below those tools out things automatically. So I see in a way I am, you know, in between. So I see how it can be complex, but I also see the, the, the positive side and benefits of, uh, using a PSA tool as a small team as well. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. it I guess it's, it's about future proofing your business and there will come a time. I mean, it, it, if you're, if you're a two or three man business and, um, you know, you have small customers and, and the way that you're working is fine. Brilliant. Um, but there will likely come a day when that isn't enough. Um, and it, it usually happens pretty quickly. Uh, someone will get a large client and all of a sudden, uh, everything's changed. This larger client expects, uh, you know, certain approvals to be in place. They, they expect their, their invoicing to be standardized their SLAs to be standardized and everything. And, um, you want to make sure that you're ready for that before that day. Uh, otherwise, well, it's, it's the, the age old point of being proactive instead of reactive, right? Um, you want to make sure that you're ready for the change before the change turns up. Otherwise you're, you're scrambling to completely sort of restructure your business. And, um, so yeah, in that respect, I, I would probably say the PSA, I, I would, I would err on the side of, uh, get a PSA before you need it because you will need it at some point. Um, it's, 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 it's completely good point and uh one thing catched my ear uh what you mentioned is the word standardize so basically every business has a the, the key goal of every business is to grow to expand of course you want to grow your business and as you say as you you know continue working on the goal of uh, expanding your business it will grow and you will come to a point where you need to automate to be more efficient, but, uh, it's even, you know, uh, maybe even better to implement a PSA tool before you reach that point, because as you say, the key word standardize, because if you can, you know, standardize your services, uh, it will actually help you grow faster. And at some point, even if not now, you want to make sure that you standardize your services and that you provide the same level service to all of your customers, customers and as, as, as you grow, it becomes harder and harder to do that. So it's a, it's a yeah. good yeah. point. And Absolutely. yeah. So the, sorry, were you going to say something? Yeah, yeah no, 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 I wanted to say that it's like, as we, as we're going into this, you know, uh, topic of, uh, you know, implementation and the, the, the company sizes. And so that another thing also comes, it's, you know, the complexity, you know, of the PSA tools. Yeah. And you know, it's, it's really interesting. It's some kind of even also more of a philosophic, you know, question, um, 
people want simplicity. They want, you know, you know, simple solutions, but, um, the, 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 it, uh, let's say, I think this can be also said basically for, for almost uh, every solution, but you need to have, let's say complexity to have simplicity. Yeah. If yeah. that makes any sense. As, as part of the onboarding team, um, I am all too familiar with that. Yeah. It, it, there's, there's no, there's no shortcut to, uh, to a, a proper implementation, you know, um, and, and exactly as you say, a simple outcome, a, a simple result, uh, usually requires something complex going on behind the scenes to achieve it. Um, but you know, that being said, and following on from the, the, the point that we just made about sort of, uh, future proofing your business, you. You don't necessarily have to um, add on all the bells and whistles of the PSA from day one, you know, and um, if anything, I, I think that can lead to uh, a feeling of being overwhelmed because you know, a PSA is such a large system because it, it has to be because it's managing every aspect of your business. Um, but just bear in mind when, you, when you're first sort of considering your PSA and first implementing your PSA first setting it up um you, you know this it, this should be a long term investment your your PSA tool and uh, you know get a solid foundation in um make sure that you have at least the minimum that you need to to get your business running with the the new PSA that you have um and leave it at that to start with get to grips with with the processes that that are, have been set in place by the whatever psa it is that you have um and then you know once you're familiar with the baseline come back to it in, in a couple of months time and and put a little bit more on um don't bite off more than you can chew just remember that it's it's a marathon not a sprint mm. that's what i would probably say What's, for example, interesting to me, um, specifically, you know, in regards to, to Halo PSA. So, I mean, we are talking about PSA tools in, in general. So we are here just, you know, to, to discuss PSA tools, platforms and so on. So, um, but I, I'm referring, you know, to Halo PSA because that's what I'm familiar with. And we haven't worked sure. so much with our PSA tools, but we know that, for example, there are PSA tools uh, on the market that are not uh, offering the same level of, uh, uh, I'm not sure if this is the proper English word, configurability, Did I say <laughs> it correctly? I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. How would you say I, it? I, I, I would say the same, I guess. Okay. I don't know if so, it's even a word, but yeah. Uh, yeah, we, yeah, no, because, yeah, because, you know, it's like they come, you, you get everything out of the box and you always reach some kind of limit, you know, can we do this? No, you know, it's like, mm, that's not possible. But what's specific about, let's say, Halo PSA is that it has such a high level of uh, configurability. So the tool comes basically set up out of the box. And if you want, you can turn it upside down. You can switch everything, replace everything, you know, implement whatever you want, just, you know, uh, go crazy, you know, whatever your imagination and desires, you know, um, yeah. uh, come up with. And what we have seen that uh, some of uh, partners of our partners and some implementations that we did, this was actually, you know, initially you would think, okay, you know, it's like everybody will be so happy because you can do whatever you want with this tool. But then, you know, this turned to be some kind of scary because now yeah. You can do whatever you want with this tool. So what should you do? It's like, what's the best, you know, to do? So it's like, yeah, it yeah. came from uh, a point of, yeah, this is so cool because we can do whatever. It's like, oh crap, we can do whatever. It's like, what now, you know, what's the best thing to do? You know, so it's like, it's always, yeah. you know, um, simplicity or, you know, flexibility, you know, and, and to find some kind of, you know, middle ground. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, like. Part of my um, journey as a consultant, when I started off doing implementations, um, I would try and tell the customer about as many options uh, as I knew about. We would literally go through configuration and look at every single checkbox. And I rather quickly found that to uh, be n not so fruitful. Um, 
the the last time I checked, uh, approximately a year ago now, there were there were over seven hundred configuration options. Um, there is no way that anyone needs to touch every single one of those. Um, so it, it's the thing is, it's like. It's a new toy, right? A new PSA. Mm. You've got the, you've got this fancy new system. Um, you want to know about everything it can do, uh, and like you say, that can that can become overwhelming in itself. Um, so, as I sort of matured as a, a consultant, I changed my approach from telling people about everything that Halo PSA can do uh, to redirecting the conversation as to what do you want to do as a business. Um, and the chances are, as, as you said, the chances are Halo PSA can do it, um, but it, it's better to tackle the question from the standpoint of what do I need to do as a business and then work backwards from there as opposed to what can Halo PSA do and try and, you know, frame your business in, into all of these configuration options. Um, let, let the PSA mold to your business instead of mold to the PSA. I, I, that sounds pretty, pretty um, good way to do it. It's just focus on, on, on a specific company and what do they want to achieve. And once you achieve that, you know, initial uh, goal, then, you know, you can, or a customer in this case, can, you know, take a look at other features, you know, yeah. and see what other things that you know they maybe like or want to integrate and expand from this this point point yeah 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 exactly and and also you know as we talk about all this uh you know let's say technical perspective you know sales perspective we we also see that um when we talk to a lot of uh prospects it's like they're believing that you know um when we even you know mention a psa tool or something like that it's like oh no guys this is just we don't have money for this. It's it's, it's too expensive. But that's not yeah. necessarily the case. The, you know the PSA tools or you know the projects, their implementation don't necessarily have to you know take so much from your budget. No, yeah, yeah. it exactly. It's I suppose you know when you're talking about a single system that is going to be automating processes across your business, straight away you're thinking, God, that sounds expensive. Um, but yeah, I suppose you'd be surprised with, um, you know, some of the, the mid-market pricing. I think Halo's pricing, is, is, Halo BSA's pricing is very competitive as well. And um, I don't know too much about, because I, I don't really touch the sales side uh, too much. So I can't speak to, to how much it would cost to have a help desk, a project management tool and a CRM tool. But I imagine when you get to that point, you're probably paying more than you would pay for Halo PSA anyway, or uh, at least comparable for, for other PSA tools. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And, and, and you, you saw, you may, I'm not sure if you saw, but um, I, I've seen lately, you know, a lot of people uh, tending to use um, artificial intelligence, you know, <laughs> as some kind of, let's say, you know, their personal assistants and do automation, yeah. you know, for them. Have you, have you in this kind of you know cases i mean it's everything is some kind of initial starting phase but you know in a way yeah. they're trying to achieve what the psa tool would uh, do for them maybe not necessarily for the company but personally yeah i i think um like the the hype of uh, chat gpt over the recent months has almost caused some hysteria and, and everyone is um Everyone's trying to to find the best way to uh, import an AI it. into their business. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, I mean, I can certainly see it uh, becoming a very closely integrated part of, of um, any service provider, um, mm -hmm. particularly for sort of um, you know chatbot features and basic Q and A sort of. Or it, I see it. Perhaps not for a while, maybe not this year, but but at some point in the future, I see it becoming um, level one support. Let's say uh, I don't think it's going to replace everything, um, but yeah, over time, I, I see it being the the initial responder, and um, it's going to be a way of 
uh, getting answers to customers w without you even knowing that it's happening. Uh, I mean, we've recently. It, sorry, go on. Yeah, no, no, no. I just uh, I I wanted to say that the only thing that you know at the moment I, I personally I wouldn't you know definitely do that or use that because I don't really feel comfortable like you know sharing my personal data or let's say you know business related data with um, ChatGPT or you know I, I don't think that's kind of you know a smart move at this point. But um, I really didn't even you know go. I, my plan was not to go in this direction. I just, you know, it came to my mind that I saw this, you know, interesting fact about uh, using AI as some kind of, you know, personal assistant and, you know, how it relates to PSA. But since uh, now that we mentioned it, um, you actually have integration with uh, ChatGPT or if I'm... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really it's, didn't it's... do it on purpose. I didn't mention it on purpose. It was just completely accidental. Yeah, and now it came to mind, but you guys already have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing um, that you mentioned uh, right now in direction that um, this could go and having, you know, your first level of support be, be completely automated, would you say that's some kind of, let's say, not a roadmap, but direction that uh, you see you guys going? Or uh, at least trying no. to go? No. Okay. No, no, we're not going to, we're not going to be pushing that. Um, our integration i mean integrating with uh, openai the company that published uh, chat gpt gpt4 etc uh, is surprisingly simple um so the integration is rather flexible this does a couple of things it uh, it can auto respond to messages it can enhance agent notes and, and you can put it onto the halo psa live chat as well um but we're not going to be pushing that it's not it's not going to be sort of it's certainly not part of the Halo roadmap to, to phase out uh, level one. I can just kind of see that being a byproduct of, of uh, you know, these large language models. Uh, I already see a marketing headline, headline, stop employing people's, you know, we have first level support handled yeah. for you. Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So th there is one thing that, you know, um, I, I wanted to, you know, maybe comment or you know check with you it's like a statement so um it's about psa tools in general and you know the fact that uh, some vendors like to use you know the, the the statement like um we are the best psa tool on the market yeah yeah is this is this really can you can you really you know can you really say you know we are the best in something so i i certainly don't think so um i see these conversations, not not only vendors stating themselves to be the best PSA tool, but um, also so uh, sorry, also people asking on forums, uh, what, what is the best? best? Yeah, what is the best PSA tool? Um, and you'll see a very long thread that becomes very heated about you know uh, one PSA tool versus another, and this one can do this, but this other one can do that, and, and you know whatever. Um, there is no, there is no answer. There is no best PSA tool. Um, there is a best PSA tool for you, for your requirements. Um, again, you know, the, a platform as large and all encompassing as a PSA tool is never just going to be cut and dry the best. Um, there's going to be certain aspects of it certain aspects of one PSA tool that are better than another. Um, mm. But your requirement, you you might not have the requirements that, that satisfy the best aspects of that tool. So it's, um, there will never be a winner, so to speak. Mm. Um, it, it's always a matter of what are your preferences, what works for you, and uh, go from there. That's what I, I would say. I think that's fair to say, basically, and you can apply this on every solution on the market. It's like, yeah, you can't really say, you know, this is the best tool. As you said, you know, you have to check what's the best for you because the best for you is not necessarily best for me and for someone other. And I had a conversation with uh, with uh, one of their colleagues and friends um, who is uh, actually as well from UK, uh, from your mm -hmm. side. Um, and he really described this in a in a way that uh, I, I really liked it. So they said he said, you know, it's like whenever you're looking for a specific you know technology or or a tool, just you know um, 
it's like, for example, when France and, you know, Great Britain were, you know, building the tunnel, you know, and, uh, you know, everybody, both of sides were, you know, digging from their side. And, you know, it mm -hmm. could be easily, it could easily happen that they, you know, missed, but they found perfectly in the middle. And that's the same, let's say, thing you can apply to every solution or technology that you're searching for. You have to, you know, see with every vendor what is their idea of the specific technology and what's your idea and do you match if you don't match of course you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. absolutely it, it's yeah it, it's a matter of alignment um otherwise it, it you know you're only going to cause yourself more problems than are necessary so yeah mm, definitely true. have that as a big consideration don't don't let people on forums tell you uh what is the best because it's for best you for them mm, yeah mm. yeah exactly that's true that's true so uh morgan let's do some key takeaways for today uh what mm. would uh, you say it's important you know for everybody who will be you know listening or you know watching this session afterwards uh what are the key takeaways they should take take from this um Whatever, whatever size you are, if you don't have a PSA at all right now, um, then, and you're a service provider, uh, you know, whatever service provider that may be, whether you're a, an IT service provider or otherwise, um, seriously consider how, um, getting any PSA would benefit you. Um, once you get the PSA, don't try and absolutely everything into it from day one um you know ramp up your process get a baseline in get it working get familiar with the tool and then go from there um you know don't be scared away by the thought of the price evaluate how much you're already paying for your existing stack um and compare that to your psa and understand what you do as a business, what you want to do as a business, uh, you know, what what are your troubles right now? What's working right now? Make sure that you you fix the problems, uh, but don't lose the good points of whatever it is you're using. And um, and once you have a, a good idea of what it is you are looking for, uh, find the tool that that fits those needs, and don't listen to people on forums that tell you otherwise. Exactly. So, I mean, I think you summed it up really perfectly. Um, and, uh, I wouldn't really, you know, um, how to say, I, I, I really, really wouldn't really have anything to add there. So, um, I want to, you know, thank you, you know, for this conversation. It was, you know, really nice talking to you. Um, uh, looking forward to the next opportunity. I will just, you know, use uh, opportunity and also, you know, we did it for um, the last session that we did with, with other colleagues. Um, uh, he gave me a really nice idea. He said, listen, you know, if anybody is, you know, watching this, uh, just please, you know, of course, subscribe, you know, to our uh, podcast channel and so on. And uh, please feel free to drop us or send us any ideas that you may have, you know, so it's like maybe there's some kind of topic around, you know, PSA tools or anything similar that you would like us to do or talk about so we can, you know, also uh, use this opportunity to gather some uh, ideas from uh, our listeners. And uh, yeah, next one we will have on uh, phishing uh, awareness and education. So we are jumping from PSA a little bit to security. So guys, please uh, join us if you want to hear more about this topic. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. And yeah, thank you for watching and see you on the next one. Morgan, have a great day and a great weekend and uh, hopefully talk to you soon. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah, looking forward to the next time we catch up. As well. Cheers, guys. Bye. Bye-bye.